Welcome to another broadcast from Victory Church Odessa with Gian, Tracy, and all the wonderful church members. Today, you will listen to the Word of God, wonderful worship and praise music, and the practical application from Scripture for your daily life. Our goal is to exalt the name of our Lord Jesus and to encourage you to develop more faith as you reflect on the Bible. We hope you will enjoy this program. Now let me introduce you to our pastor, Gian. Can I change God's anger into mercy? That's the topic of today, March 26th, 2023 from Odessa, Texas. This is our worship service 335, and I invite you to download the bulletin. You can go to our website, vchurch.us, look for the tab bulletins, and then you can find the date, March 26th. The other option is, if you are watching in the comfort of your home, you will see this QR code on the screen. Open the camera on your phone and point towards the QR code. Then you will see a link. Click on that to download the bulletin of the service of today. And then you can follow us there. And thank you so much for your support, my beautiful church member. Thank you. Praise the Lord. We are here one more time enjoying being in the house of the Lord. And of course, with everyone here today in the church. Thank you, my brother, my sisters, everybody here with us today. It's a privilege for us and our team to be able to be with you and worship the name of our Lord Jesus together. I invite everyone listening or watching to be part of this. vchurch.us is the place to go if you want to give a donation to our ministry. Thank you so much for that. I remind you the importance of connecting with Victory Radio, 24-7 Christian programming. You will hear great music, teachings, encouragement that you need for your life. Can I change God's anger into mercy? That's an interesting question, don't you think? That's the topic of this morning, March 26, 2023. Our worship service 335 from Odessa, Texas, Victory Church, and I remind you, Go to our website, vchurch.us, to get all the different productions that we are releasing. And why is it that it's important to talk about the anger of God? Well, one question that is an interesting question to ask is, why would the Lord God be angry? Have you ever thought about it, my friend? Why is it that the Lord God will be angry? Well, let me ask you this question. Why do you get angry? Because you get angry, right? So why do you do that? Well, because there is disrespect. That's the number one thing that upsets you. Disrespect. And and disrespect can be directly to you, right? When the way that they talk to you. But also disrespect could be because of the way that they are treating your things. They are not respecting your things. That is why you get angry. Well, there is no difference between you and the Lord God. And then the question is, is God the true owner of everything? What do you think? (laughs) Who do you think created everything, my friend? Of course, he is the owner of everything. He created everything. And somebody can say, well, I own my own life. Do you? Really? (laughs) Did you make yourself, my friend? Did you? Are you one... Are you the one who made everything happen in your life? Everything? You think that the strength that you have and the family that you possess, your assets, your intelligence and everything, you made it happen? (laughs) And then somebody else will say, well, God does God have to do with me? Well, you just leave me alone, right? What if I don't want to have anything to do with God? You know, even though you don't believe it, God loves you because he created you and he has a plan for your life. He does love you and he has a plan for your life. So let's study together. Together, let's study the scripture and find out how the Lord God is fair and practice true justice. Do you want to? Let's do it. So I'm going to share with you examples in the Bible of what happened to upset the Lord God. 
And I will give you seven examples. Cain, people in Noah's time, Pharaoh, the pagans, Sodom, Saul, and Herod. But also, I'm going to give you examples in the Bible of what happened that made the Lord God change his mind from anger to mercy. David, Peter, and Saul are those examples. So let's do it. Let's begin our journey together. <laughs> Wonderful. That's right. That's right. Let's start with Cain. And we read the scripture from the easy to read version in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Please, Lord, guide us through this reflection. Genesis 4, 8 through 9. Cain said to his brother Abel, let's go out to the field. So they went to the field. Then Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. Later, the Lord said to Cain, where is your brother Abel? Cain answered, I don't know. Is it my job to watch over my brother? Whew. Here we see, number one, the evil plants. You know that Cain hated it. Abel. Couldn't stand him. There was jealousy between the, t the two of them. And then the plan, the evil plan was to kill his own brother. That, per se, is evil. The end of Cain was terrible, my friends. Murdering somebody, we know, is bad. But the worst part is that there was no apology. So let me ask you this question. When you do something wrong, and you hear in your heart the voice of God telling you, what have you done? Do you start trying to hide what you did, justify what you just did? Hmm? Think about it. What was the last bad thing you did? Oh, you don't remember? <laughs> there you go. No apology. That's the problem, my friend. You know it. He knows it. There was done something in a very poor way. Bad, bad, bad. And rather than facing the reality and saying, I'm so sorry. I mean, you got caught. Rather than that, no apology. Bad. Okay. Next temple. Next same example is people in Noah's time. This is in Genesis chapter 6, verses 5 through 8. The Lord saw that the people on the earth were very evil. <laughs> he saw that they thought only about evil things all the time. The Lord was sorry that he made people on the earth. It made him very sad in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy all the people I created on earth because I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah pleased the Lord. Evil lives are going to be destroyed, period, during the times of Noah and during the times of anybody else, past, present, and future. Evil doers are going to be punished. However, in this passage in Genesis 6, begins the story of a out, somebody that is outstanding, Noah, that's his name. Because even in the midst of evil, the good people can make the difference. Not because you are surrounded by evil, you will say, well, you know, everybody does what is wrong, so I got to do the same thing. No, my friend, no. Not because everybody is doing wrong, you're going to do what is wrong. You understand that? Not because people are evil, you're going to be the same type of person. <laughs> Noah made the difference. Next temple is Pharaoh. You know, Pharaoh is the case of someone that, that is a bad leader. Bad leader from the beginning. Egyptians 
took the Israelites and made them slaves and not out of envy again, because Joseph, who was the second to Pharaoh years before this, he had grace in the eyes of that Pharaoh back then. So the Israelites were doing good, but with the pass of the generations, boom, they became slaves. Exodus 9, 12 tells us that the Lord made Pharaoh stubborn, so he refused to listen to Moses and Aaron, just as the Lord said. You know, bad leaders, they become more and more stubborn. Have you noticed that? Have you watched the news lately? (laughs) Everywhere in the world, my friend, everywhere in the world. Leaders of companies, leaders of corporations, leaders of countries. When they are bad, they just become more and more stubborn. And you know the end of this story. The Egyptians suffered greatly while the people of God, while the people of God were made free. Free. Freedom and victory. New beginnings is what happens to those that pray to God and they are willing to follow good leaders, having faith and say, you know what? It seems like an impossibility to leave Egypt, this place where we are slaves. It seems like it's an impossibility. How are we going to do this? But you are saying we are going to be free and we will have our own land? Really, Moses? Really? Are you sure about this? People of God hear the preaching of the word. Maybe you are one of those. You are listening. You are watching. And you are thinking, who is this guy talking to me? Who is this guy on the screen? Is he talking about freedom for real? You are thinking, you don't know anything about my context. You know, you are a happy person. You are healthy. You have a nice family. Blah, blah, blah. You can tell anything about me, you know. And you say, because of that, you can talk about happiness, but my life is not like yours. But what you don't know, my friend, is, first of all, about my past. You don't know anything about my own story. You don't know anything about my ancestors. You have no idea. But I'm familiar with the territory of poverty, scarcity, oppression, corruption in my country. I am familiar with evil. Well, hello. I practiced evil when I was young. (laughs) But the promise is that it's going to come a deliverer. His name is Jesus, who died for me, set me free, forgave me, and then is giving me now a path for victory, prosperity, advancements, healing, wisdom, strength. The question is, are you listening to bad leaders like Pharaoh, or are you going to listen to the leader that is, (coughs) excuse me, A leader that is coughing while he's talking. (laughs) Whether it's me, my friend, or any other preacher, probably not any other, but those that are into the scripture, you know, those are the ones that are going to set you free in the name of Jesus. Now, the next example of that about the people that suffer are the pagans. In Exodus 34, verses 10 through 11, the Lord said, I am making this agreement with all of your people. I will do amazing things that have never been done before. For any other nation on earth, the people with you will see that I, the Lord, am very great. They will see the wonderful things that I will do for you. Obey what I command you today, and I will force your enemies to leave your land. I will force out the pagans. Worship me alone, not like them. So if you wonder, pagan, what's a pagan? A pagan is a person who does not worship the true God creator of heaven and earth. That's a pagan. Are you a pagan? Well, here in Exodus is the beginning of the process of conquering the land. The Lord 
said to Moses and eventually takes Joshua with him and the leaders of Israel to go and possess the land. That's the promise that the Lord has for every believer. But you need to move forward. You need to move forward. You see, you were in sin and slavery. Now you move forward. But those that refuse to worship God alone, they are the ones that are going to suffer. You don't want to be one of those. Sodom is another great example of evil. Now, this kind of evil is evil sexual behavior. They were into homosexuality. And who knows what else? Everything that has to do with evil sexual behavior is exactly that. Let's read here what the Lord says, the Lord Jesus, in Luke chapter 10, verses 11 and 12. If you go into a town and the people don't welcome you, then go out into the streets of that town and say, even the dirt from your town that sticks to our feet, we wipe off against you. But remember that God's kingdom is coming soon. I tell you, on the judgment day, it will be worse for the people of that town than for the people of Sodom. And why the Lord Jesus says something like that? Well, you know, the end of the people in Sodom was terrible with fire, destruction. But why the Lord says it's going to be worse? Well, because one thing that we can tell in behalf of the people of Sodom is that they didn't have access to the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. So there are people that they live in sin, they they were conceived in sin, they live in evil atmospheres, they never hear the preaching of the word, they don't know about Jesus, they don't know about church, maybe that can explain a little kind of mercy from God, but it's all relative, because you know that most everywhere there is a church. Most everywhere there is someone talking about the Lord in the Bible. Anyways, let's go to the next case. Is a king, king of Israel. His name is Saul. This guy, he was told to do something and he didn't do it. Let's read 1 Samuel 15, 22 and 23. Samuel answered, which pleases the Lord more, burnt offerings and sacrifices or obeying his commands? It is better to obey the Lord than to offer sacrifices to him. It is better to listen to him than to offer the fat from rams. Refusing to obey is a bad as is bad as the sin of sorcery, a divination. Being stubborn and doing what you want is like the sin of worshiping idols, pagans. You refused to obey the Lord's command. So he now refuses to accept you as you to accept you as king. He was fired. I'm talking about someone that the Lord said, you will be the king of my people, the leader. And now he's being fired. That's not fun. That's embarrassing for, for everybody, for him, the people. It's terrible because disobeying God is bad, but especially when it's defiantly disobeying God. You know, Saul knew what he needed to do, but no. And then he's just trying to find a way, you know, to get out of the problem. Mm -mm, that's not good. That's not good. Now, probably the worst example that I can give you here or maybe it's the best. <laughs> it's about the how stupidity could be moved to the extent of the epitome of a stupidity. The epitome of a stupidity is what you see here in Herod's case. Herod was the governor in the area of Israel during the times of the Lord Jesus and John the Baptist. And he did many bad things. He was an adulterer, a murderer. He killed babies, killed and decapitated John the Baptist. This guy was terrible. 
But listen to this, chapter Acts, um, I mean, book of Acts, chapter 12, verses 21 and 23. One day, Herod was wearing a beautiful royal robe. Can you imagine that, right? Beautiful. He, he sat on his throne and made a speech to the people, everybody around him. The people shouted, this is the voice of God, not amen. You know, Herod did not give the glory to God. So an angel of the Lord caused him to get sick. He was eaten by worms inside him and he died. Let me tell you, some people are really stupid. It's a fact. This case is the perfect example of the epitome of a stupidity. A guy who was doing bad things, didn't respect anything, didn't respect God, <laughs> didn't respect anybody. He was just awful. And then one day, you know, when he's talking in being so prideful about his things. Of course, people are telling him things. Oh, you are fantastic. You are so great. And he believed it. He never said, you know what, guys? This is wrong. I'm evil. I'm, I'm, I have done many bad things. I'm not God. In fact, I need to change. You know? No. He was pleased with that. And you see people like that in these days, right? Well, this is the justice of God, my friends. Now, let's see what smart people did to change God's anger into mercy. Let's see that together. All right? Because it's important to see this. The first example is David. You know, David, he made a terrible mistake. He got involved with this woman who was married and then he ordered the death of the husband. The girl is pregnant. And now he brings her into the palace. And the prophet Nathan comes and confronted him. What have you done? You are doing bad things. This is what Nathan says. You had sexual, sexual relations with Bathsheba in secret, but I will punish you. Is Nathan talking in behalf of the Lord. I will punish you so that all the people of Israel can see it. Then David, David said to Nathan, I have sinned. You think? <laughs> I have sinned against the Lord. Nathan said to David, the Lord will forgive you even for this sin. You will not die. But you did things that made the Lord's enemies lose their respect for him. So your new baby son will die. There is forgiveness and also consequences. You see that? David, he, has a, he had a great life. Many, many wonderful things he did. But like everybody else, like you and I, like everybody else, we do good things with one hand and terrible things with the other. One day we do what is right and we are so good. And the next day we do what is wrong and we are so bad. Sometimes we do the good thing in the day and we do the bad thing in the night. And vice versa. What is it? What's going on with us? Why do we do these things? Well, we are humans. You and I. We are just humans. We are not perfect. God is perfect. In fact, we are here to discover through our mistakes, our errors, our sins, that we need His forgiveness, that we need His mercy. But that mercy will come only when you accept your mistake, accept your sin, my friend. When you accept that you have sinned. Is what David said. However, that doesn't mean that from now on, everything is going to be so beautiful for you. No problems whatsoever. Oh, he's in church now. Wonderful. No, no problems for him. It's not like that. Because there are consequences in your life. 
It is not fun to see this particular scenario. A baby that is about to die. A mother hurting. You know, that, that's tough. And David was someone that loved the Lord. He loved the Lord, and yet he did that. Psalm 51 is precisely one of the most famous, perhaps, psalms in the Bible, because it talks about how David felt the day that was confronted by the prophet about his wrongdoing, wrongdoings. Read it when you have a chance. Psalm 51, tremendous example, but he was forgiven. Next example is Paul. You know that previously he was named Saul. So here in this reading in Acts chapter 9, we read the, the name Saul, but it's Paul, the apostle. Now, he was honestly wrong. What, are, what I am saying here, honestly wrong? Yeah, he was wrong because he was against Jesus, but he was honest. He just didn't know. If you don't know anything about Jesus and you are against Jesus, well, I'm sorry, but you are wrong. But you are honest, right? You are honest. You say, I don't believe that. Well, because you haven't had the encounter. Encounter. What encounter? Let's read the encounter. Okay? Let's read. Acts chapter 9, verses 3 to 6. Saul went to Damascus. When he came near the city, a very bright light from heaven suddenly shined around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are Are you persecuting me? Saul said, Who are you, Lord? The voice answered, I am Jesus, the one you are persecuting. Get up now and go into the city. Someone there will tell you what you must do. Saul became blind at that moment. He stayed blind until there was a miracle. When he recovered his sight, Acts chapter 9. Read that that chapter and the following chapters. Acts chapter 9 and forward tells us the story about Paul's conversion. He was honestly wrong, but he learned to become teachable. But not just teachable, teachable by Bible teachers. Do you see that? The Lord says, someone there will tell you what you must do. Now, Paul was very knowledgeable about Judaism, like you probably are very knowledgeable about your religion. But when you have the encounter with Jesus, when the light comes to you, and suddenly you want to know about this light, the true, why Jesus is so famous in the world. Why Jesus is so relevant in history, and especially why Jesus is <laughs> essential for your salvation and your future and your eternal life. You must become teachable by Bible teachers. That is how it changed God's anger to, into mercy. And finally, I want to tell you about Peter. Peter actually had a pretty cool experience because he was a disciple of the Lord Jesus. He was in the inner circle. The Lord Jesus had 12 disciples, direct disciples. Throughout three years, they spent most of the time with the Lord, going places and seeing miracles. And I mean, imagine what experience for for Peter. You know, he saw wonders walking in the water like Jesus did. He saw one day the Lord Jesus bring him back to life to a little 12 years old girl. He heard the Lord Jesus calling Lazarus, Lazarus, come out. And the guy who was dead came back to life. Peter was there when the Lord said, let me pray for this fish and this bread. And suddenly, boom, all this food. Thousands were eating out of that. (laughs) And I can go on and on with all the stories. 
But that's not the point. The point is this. Peter lived it. He saw it. He touched him. They laughed together. They cried together. They did things together. They went places together. It was awesome. But one day, the Lord was telling them about the necessity for him to die. Because the Lamb of God has to die for you and for me. Peter didn't like that. They were good friends. Actually, one day, the Holy Spirit revealed to Peter that Jesus was the Messiah, the Savior. So Peter is thinking, dying? Oh, no. Oh, no. You're not going to die. Well, I must die. <laughs> the Lord said to, to Peter, and Peter goes, well, if that's the case, I'm going to die with you. I'm going to give my life for you. And guess what happened? The Lord said to, to Peter, you know what, Peter? Actually, you will deny me. No, I won't. Let's read here. Matthew 26, verses 74 and 75. Peter said, I swear to God, I don't know the men. That is after they captured the Lord Jesus, right? He's in the patio with everybody else. This is the third time that he denies the Lord Jesus. As soon as he said this, a rooster crowd, then he remembered what Jesus had told me, told him, before the rooster crows, you will say three times that you don't know me. Then Peter went outside and cried bitterly. After seeing everything that he saw with the Lord for three years, and after he realizes that he failed, I promise you, I will give my life. I will die with you. No, you won't. You will deny me three times. No, I won't. Then they separated for a moment, and Peter was thinking, deny him. I'm not going to deny him. I won't. I'm going to be faithful. He is my friend. Now I'm angry. <laughs> I don't know why he said that. Deny him. I'm loyal, you know. Everybody knows that. Hey, guys, am I a loyal person? He said I'm not. I don't get it. I know who I am. I know what I am capable of doing. It. And you know me, guys, right? Right. Shh. I can't believe he said that to me. <laughs> now, here's you. I know what is the right thing to do. I'm going to do what is right. I'm not going to do that. I will never, never in a million years do what is wrong. Man, I'm angry. How dare you? Suggesting that I will even think about that thing. I'm not going to do it. Everybody knows that I am a nice guy. Everybody knows that I am good. I know what I am capable of doing. And, you know, I'm strong. I'm smart, right? Right. I know. <laughs> I'm angry now. You know, that's unacceptable. And it happens. Eventually, you fail. Eventually, you sin. Eventually, you will do what you said to the four winds that you will never do. You will swallow your own words, my friend. Because no one in this world is perfect. You are not perfect. Don't pretend that you are perfect because you are not perfect. Don't try to tell me that you do everything right. That's baloney. You are lying. Don't tell me that you do everything by the book. Don't tell me that your whole life, everything that you have done, it's right and perfect. Don't tell me that. Well, you know what? Thinking about it, tell me that. Keep telling me that. Because there is a rooster waiting for you. <laughs> there is a rooster waiting for you. And I cannot wait to hear the rooster. The question is what you're going to do when you hear the rooster. 
because every believer is going to hear the rooster. Have you heard the rooster? Maybe you will. The rooster comes in different ways, my friend. The question is, what will you do when that happens? You know what Peter did? He went outside and cried bitterly. That is what happens when you are confronted with the reality of your life and you said, I have been mistaking all this life. I have been doing what is wrong. I have been against this and that. And uh, do you know what? I don't even know why did I do that. <sighs> then you go outside where there is nobody because you need to be alone when the rooster crows. You need to be by yourself when you realize that you have done the wrong thing. You need to be alone, 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 and cry. And it's good for you. Remorse is a great thing. Remorse is a wonderful thing for everybody. And perhaps today is a good day for you to cry in the presence of God and admit that you have been wrong and you want to change God's anger into mercy. This story with Peter didn't finish there. Did not. You know what happened? When he was crying bitterly, he said to the Lord, Lord, God, forgive me. Forgive me, Lord. I have done wrong things with my life and I promised you that I will never do wrong but I have. Then is the moment, my friend, when everything changes for you because you touch the heart of God when you repent. When you are crying and you say, I cannot keep doing this. I cannot pretend anymore that I am this person when I am not. I cannot pretend anymore that I believe these religions when I don't believe them. I can't pretend to be somebody that I am not. I want to be myself. I want to be the true person that I am, that God made me. And the only way that, way that you can do it is when you acknowledge, you acknowledge that you have sinned. And then you say, Lord God, please forgive me. And that is why the scripture that you see in the screen is so essential for you. God loved the world so much that He gave His only Son so that everyone who believes in Him will not be lost, but have eternal life. John 3, 16. This precious scripture tells you right there that the Lord God loves you no matter what happened in the past. And it's time for you to change and give your life to the Lord Jesus. So you surrender and you say, Lord God, I am here for real. For real, ready to change. Please change your anger into mercy for me. So say with me, dear God, say with me, come on. Dear God, I open my heart for you. I open my life. Come through your Holy Spirit. Dwell in me. Please forgive me. I repent from my sins. I don't want to do anything wrong anymore. For real. I believe that Jesus is your son. And through him, I have eternal life. Thank you, Lord God, for loving me. You want to hear something even more wonderful for you? If you are sick, any kind of illnesses, the Lord God can heal you. So today, read this portion that the prophet Isaiah says in chapter 53. Jesus was being punished for what we did. He was crushed because of our guilt. He took the punishment we deserved, and this brought us peace. We were healed because of his pain. The pain he suffered on Calvary, the 24 hours prior to his crucifixion, that pain in his body, you are healed because of his pain. When he was bleeding and about to die, 
the struggles that he had in his mind also, there in that moment, your mental illnesses, your traumas, all your emotional pain also is removed because you are healed because of his pain. That changes everything, my friend. And all that is possible because you believe that Jesus is the Son of God. I am so happy that you believe that because that makes us brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. And we have together done something beautiful, changing God's anger into mercy. Next Sunday, here in Victory Church, in our worship service 336 on April 2nd, I'm going to share with you the triumphal entrance, how the Lord Jesus comes into Jerusalem. I hope that you will be here with me. This is what I have for you in this message. 335, can I change God's anger into mercy? Of course you can. Share this message, whichever is the platform you are using. And you all, friends, go to the website, thechurch.us. There are tons of materials. Feed your mind with good, positive, scriptural messages in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much. And I wish you a beautiful rest of your day. Not before telling you one more time. Go to the website, victoryradio.us, our online radio 24-7. Have a great rest of your day. One of the most wonderful things in the Bible is the promise from God to a believer to be abundantly blessed when the believer gives to the Lord the first fruits of his work and labors. Learn this promise in Malachi chapter 3, verses 10 through 12. Test me in this way, says the Lord of armies. Bring me the 10% of your income and see if I will not open the floodgates of heaven and pour out a blessing for you without measure. I will rebuke the devourer for you, so that it will not ruin the produce of your land, and your vine in your field would not fail to produce fruit, says the Lord of Armies. Victory Radio is now available 24-7. Visit our website, www.victoryradio.us. Great music, positive messages, optimism to keep you company while you work, or when you drive, or when you are at home cooking. Faith is what you need. Faith comes when you hear the right thing. Victory Radio is the new thing. Find us on the website, www.victoryradio.us. Have a great rest of your day. If you own a Roku TV, a Roku TV device, an Apple TV device, or own a Fire Stick, we invite you to install the Geon TV app. With the Geon TV app installed on your TV, you will be able to watch all the videos from the comfort of your home and be inspired with our programs. Enjoy music, inspirational videos, Bible teachings, and beautiful videos that will keep your tank of faith full all the time at the touch of a button. Remember G on TV. Receive the inspiration to achieve your calling in life. By G and Carlo Vitutoro. I know you have suffered, but what if you would have never met your mom because she died giving birth to you? That's the beginning of Simon's story. Then Simon's father died when he was only 15 years old. He was sent to a foster home where he was bullied, humiliated, and there was no one to protect him. But Simon decided to find a way to get his revenge by studying and becoming good at sports. He won a scholarship, and soon he started his own business, Simon Yardwerk. Mean people were envious of his success, but one day, Simon met and fell in love with Jackie. They were happy, until the FBI arrested Simon due to clues that incriminated him with several murdered people. Will Simon end up in prison? Don't miss the outcome of this story, The Best Revenge, the musical that will inspire everyone to pay good for evil. Go to mygiancarlo.com to purchase The Best Revenge on audio and video. Welcome to this website, mynewmentor.com. 
Here you will find the tools to establish a direct communication with your new mentor, Gian. Get the available spot on Gian's schedule and set your appointment to have an audio or video call via Skype with Gian. You Also you took all of my tears You make me feel loved, you make me feel good I love your words, you changed my world You make me feel loved, you make me feel good I love your words, you changed my world You are Even when I feel that I'm ready Ready to quit and give up Ready to throw the towel of my life away It is on those days when I realize How weak and fool I can be Considering my situation I cry out where are you God? You promised me to be with me here all the time You said that I will not be alone You promised me that you will be with me No matter what, no matter what And I know you are mine Here with me all the time
disappointed you quite many times I failed I messed up big time acting right was not my style Bright, the sun is shining with its light. I feel the wind blowing off my skin. I feel your love coming, you're my spring. The winter is over, no more snow. My heart, you filled with your love. Now in my home I hear the birds I see the kids playing, boys and girls Hear the explosion, because my life is in commotion I feel that I am falling down Whoever saves me must have a crown Flower needs the sun, like the ocean wants the moon, like the grass needs the rain. Come and take my pain away. How can somebody fix my heart? My life is falling apart. If only there was somebody who sees that I'm not nobody. How can somebody fix my heart? My life is falling apart. If only there was somebody who sees that I'm not nobody. Sing to me a love song again. Fly me on. Your airplane, be my shining star tonight. I need you badly in my life. It is absolutely amazing what I am feeling. Never before I experienced what you have done to me. I know that in the past, I didn't see things as I do now. But honestly, you have changed everything for me. And uh, I don't want to let it go. I don't want you to go anywhere. Stay here with me, by me, because you make me feel alive. And I know that you love me, and I love you. I love you with all of my heart. I belong to you. You brought me a new life, a life that is absolutely profound, real, and true.
The blessings of God are going to come to you when you are listening to the right thing, God's Word. You can find us in all of these platforms. Search for Gian TV on Apple TV, Roku TV, and Fire TV. Do you prefer a podcast? Find us too. And remember Victory Radio 24-7. The kingdom of God is near. Thank you for investing time with Victory Church Odessa. Feel free to subscribe to our channel here on this platform. Also, you can go to our website, vchurch.us, to connect with the rest of the platforms where you can follow us. Our address is 2400 West 81st Street, Odessa, Texas, 79764. Our Sunday worship service begins at 10 a.m. Our phone number is 432-614-9798. Our email address is info at vchurch.us. Feel free to share this program with your family and friends. Until next time, we wish you a wonderful rest of your day. Many blessings in the name of our Lord Jesus.